guys welcome back to the farm well I just got to deliver my least favorite news to the kids Jamie was leaving for work today and as she pulled out the driveway she noticed a gray cat in the road and of course it was it was our flow and uh, so told the kids about it never easy obviously they're crushed right now and we're all kind of sad and but that's that's part of having animals there is death so that just happened this morning it wasn't the way we wanted to start our day got off to a late start on everything else but anyway it happens we'll remember her and love her either way so we've taken her out back and buried her and we got off to a little later start but we have the chickens moved and uh it's one job that doesn't happen as often in the winter because there's not a lot of fresh grass anyway but we've got them moved um, we're gonna be talking about moving our animals and with the premier one fencing uh, chicken fencing is the same as the pig fencing as far as ease of moving well I shouldn't say ease of moving but you move it the same way it's just taller and heavier so it is a lot harder than the pig fencing but we've got the birds out um got them on fresh spot which is always nice and they are enjoying it they they enjoy it just as much as the pigs do to move and scratch on new grass find new things to eat new bugs um, also got a job that i lack on i uh, got their nest boxes full of hay um, they kick it out a lot so oftentimes they need some hay in there so we got that taken care of this morning um but we got the all the all the birds out all the birds moved to fresh ground hopefully we won't hear them crowing as often since they're right out our the front of our house but i did want to show you a trick when you're moving fencing all of these birds have two fences they're 100 feet each so they've got 200 feet of fence that they can go in and that is plenty plenty for the amount of birds that we have in each each thing so We'll move their house each day because most of their poop is underneath when uh, at night when they're roosting. That's when they poop the most. So when we wake up in the morning before we take them out, we move it a spot so that spot does not get overgrown with chicken manure. But a trick here, we've got our younger Novagens who are getting older. They should be laying here in a couple of weeks. That's why we got them when it was so cold because we want them to be laying this spring crossing our fingers that spring is just around the corner but uh, they only had one fence I only have 100 foot fence left so it's a smaller area now that they're getting bigger they mess up that area a lot quicker and so we needed to give them more space well we only have one fence so little trick here we took their fence right up next to the whiting true blue fence that's right next to them and we're using that fence as part of their area so None of these fences are electrified. We lock the birds up at night. This is just kind of contain the birds where we want them to be. They fly out every day, but they always go back in. Um, but this is giving the Novagens a lot more fence. So if you butt your fences right up next to each other and have your birds close to each other, then you can use the other fence and give your animals a bigger area. And we've done that with our pigs before and it just gives you more area with less fences so novagens have a bigger area today and uh they'll be able to stay in here a little bit longer because we've got more area to move them around so that's where we started this morning after our dilemma and our loss on the farm doesn't matter if it's a chicken a cat a turkey and they all kind of hurt a little bit so we're off to a little slower start, but we're going to get moving today. I'm going to go in and get the kids breakfast. We'll get our school done, and we're going to be back out this afternoon. And we're going to show you how we set up our pig fences. I'm going to try and slow it down a little bit and give you a couple tips that we've learned 
over the three, four years that we've been using the Premier One fences. All right, guys, we have homework done and we are getting ready to get out and move these pigs. Uh, I've got Brooklyn Isaiah to help me set up a little bit and do some videoing while I'm talking. It'd be hard to set these up while uh, holding the camera as well. But you can see with all this rain and snow and melt and freeze and everything else, this pen is ready. And believe it or not, this is just from them walking. There's really, I don't see any, maybe one or two small little spots where they might have rooted up but so we're gonna get them moved today and normally we have our pigs in at least three fences this right here is three fences around and it's going up to our pig barn they are in that door there we're gonna move them to this pen right here so this makes for an easy move not all the time do we get to just move right next to the spot but that's our goal so it makes the, it moves easier so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use the fence that's already up as this side fence. So we'll have to uh, unplug it from back here and open it up going this way. And we'll show you how we do that. Um, kind of just, we measure it out with our feet and I'll show you how I do that in a minute, but we're not really worried about these pigs going anywhere. So it's not that big of a deal, but we'll show you and open it up to where they can't get out and just go into this new spot but it takes a little bit of calculating to figure out where to start the next fence when you have to move this one over a little bit but we'll show you how we do it and uh so we'll start with a fence going this direction and we'll just make another big circle three fences big fences are 100 feet we're using the 1024 fence um and we have this one and we also have the 63012 we use the 10 we like the 1024 in the pasture um this bottom wire is not electric so it can sit right down there so it's easier to use in the pasture than in the woods are you guys ready to move but anyway so we've got a roll here and when you buy a um kit it will come with these stakes and these just kind of if you're making a sharp corner you can put these in they just step in and they hold the fence up in between the stakes if you need extra. We rarely ever use these with the pig fence because they stay pretty tight. Sometimes in the woods, we have to use them when we're going around a tree or if we need to make a sharp corner, we'll use those in the fences. But like I said, when we're out here in the pasture, we hardly ever use them. So we're gonna get this unrolled and we will do our best slowly to try and show you how we set up these fences. At the end, we'll show you how we take them down. Okay guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is untie our net. And you definitely wanna keep these strings cause when we're putting them away, obviously you're gonna need these strings to tie them back up. So we always make sure we know where our strings are at. So when we tie up our fences, when we're taking them down, we have them. These would store awfully if we didn't have those strings. So next I'll just roll out my fence and I wanna grab all the stakes. This helps your net from, this keeps your net from getting tangled up. And then we'll just lay it out like this. So I'll, I have all my stakes in one hand and we're not gonna plug these in the ground at first. We'll do the first one and then we just wanna lay them out on the ground flat so we get our area where our fence is gonna be. So we're just gonna come up here right past the barn, stick in our first stake. This ground looks a little bit frozen. So it's gonna be hard on this side cause we don't get much sun. So we'll push that one down in and when we're up against the metal, we don't want these clips to hit this barn or it's gonna be shorting out our fence. So we'll put our first stake in and then we're just gonna lay these out without sticking them in so we know where we need to get to with our next fence. So just one at a time. One at a time, I'll drop them out. Okay, so when we first started doing fences, we would stick them in the ground and set up the fence. 
And then by the time we'd get to the next fence, we wouldn't have enough fence and we'd have to take them all out and redo it again. So we've learned just laying it out first saves you a lot of time and gets you closer to where you need to be. So here comes kind of the tricky part now. Since we're using a fence that the pigs are in, we don't want to open it up right now so they can get out, but we're going to estimate where we need to start our third fence at. So here's how I do this. It's nothing uh, jaw dropping, but I'm going to go to where the fence ends right here. And then I'm just going to walk it off. I'm just going to be estimating in between posts. So I'll put my heel where that post is and I'm just going to step it off how many steps to the next post. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got about six steps in between posts and we're going to be pulling out one, two, three posts. We're going to go up there and pull that one out as well. So what I mean by that is I'm going to be starting, this post is going to stay in. We're leaving this post in the ground and we're going to take this fence out and around this way to meet up with our third fence. So math time, what's six times three? Six times three is 18. 18. So we need to take 18 steps from this post to figure out where our next fence is going to start. So here we go. All right, so there's 18 steps. I'm gonna give it a little mark right there. And this is pretty close. We'll see how well I do on camera. This is pretty close to where our next fence is going to start. So we're gonna pick up this third fence here and we'll put the first post right in there and we'll start taking it out and around to meet up with that first fence we laid out out there. Okay, so we've got our next fence by the posts. Isaiah's marking the spot where we assume or we think it's gonna be. I'm gonna put it a little bit closer just in case I went too far. So we're gonna stick that in the ground and then we'll just start laying this out on the ground to meet up with the fence we just put down. right here which is okay because nothing is set up so we can just take this post we'll move it back a little bit we want those to meet right there and then we'll adjust our fence as we start sticking in each stake all right so we're gonna come back to the barn where we started the fence and we'll start putting these in one post at a time now I want to show you something when you're putting these posts in that will help keep the sag out of your net. I'm going to hand this back to Brooklyn so I can show you. So we're started up here at the left and we're moving to the right. So you can see these posts inside each rectangle. I want to slide the post all the way to the far end of where I'm pulling this fence. If I leave it in the middle or to the left of this, when I set my fence in, it's going to leave some sag because there's some play. This ground's a little frozen. If you zoom back here, Brooklyn, you can see how the net is saggy and loose. And it's always kind of like that when you have your first posts in and you don't have them all in anyway. But one way to make it tighter, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to slide the stake all the way to the far end till it's right up against that next row. And then I'll pull it tight and push it in and it will start to tighten up. We've only got one in, so let's move down here. And when I'm doing it, instead of bending down the whole way, I just grab this and lift the wire up as I go. You can see my post is moved all the way to the left, your right of the rectangle. I wanna slide it to the far, farthest away from where I started to keep pulling that fence tight and stick it in. And you can see as you look back, the fence is starting to stand up straight and we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. Okay, we're getting ready to attach the other one 
and you can see I'm kind of heading out farther. I'm going to use as much of the pasture up here as I can because our next move is going to be that direction. So I want to save as much of that pasture as I can. So we're moving out here wide. We're going to grab our next fence, stick it in right next to it. And then we will do up these clips right here. Super simple. Come on in close. You just slide one part of the clip underneath the other. Same thing on the bottom. Okay, that is connected now. Electricity can flow through. And now we're gonna set up this fence, our second fence, heading back towards where the pigs are at. So same thing, we're just gonna pull the fence out where we need it, get to the stake and move the stake the farthest away from where you're pulling so you can keep the top line of that fence tight and it stays tight along the top. Okay, so we've got two fences set up. This one's a little, you can see it's got a little bow in it, but once we hook up our third fence and pull this one tight, it will straighten that fence out along the top. So we've got two of them, and this is the part to see if we did our math or estimating correctly. Fortunately for us, these pigs really don't wanna go anywhere when we let them out, but we are gonna open up the fence up by the barn there and just let them through and they'll start messing with the new pasture. We'll run down to this end, pull our three posts, and from the looks of it, I think I'm a little bit too far off. We'll see how it goes here in just a minute. Okay, we're gonna walk up here and get the pigs. I've got Brooklyn and Isaiah ready to pull posts and walk to the fence where we're gonna meet up. Come on, Penny. Kev, come on. So we'll get the pigs and we always let them through from obviously from the farthest to where our big gap is. We could have just put another fence on and shut up the opening, but we'll open up right here. We do have this fence turned off. I should have mentioned that. Isaiah shut the fence off up there, so when I go to open this and let the pigs through, I'm not getting zapped. So we'll open this up. Come on, pigs. It's okay if he doesn't come. Don't pull it out yet. No, no, no. Leave it shut until he comes this way. Come on, Kev. Come on, Kev. Kevin's thinking the kids are getting him a treat. All right. Penny's going to go to the opening. All right, go ahead and pull it and shut it. Grab that third post, sis. Kids are going around. Izzy, take yours all the way and meet up with that one. Go ahead and pull it. Leave that one there, sis, so she don't go over it. And look, we went a little bit too far. Okay, Izzy, stand right there. And we are gonna shorten this up a little bit so we can close the gap. Kevin's gonna go out there, but we're not too worried about them. That's why we love these pigs. They are not really trying to go anywhere. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out some slack here so we can close this gap up here. So I'll pull this out, move the fence in as far as I can. Stick it back down and just keep doing the same as we walk up here until we get enough fence to shut them in. I'll get that, bud. She, she's like on, scared Penta. of me for some reason. All right, so this is how you don't do it. We'll get them back in. Come on, Penny. Come on, Penny. So we've put the two fences together. Now Izzy can pick up that post down there and we'll just back these off to where they're tight. We need to get some. Yep. Izzy's gonna plug that one in and we are good, minus the fact we have pigs running all over. But you can see Penny's not really going anywhere. Come on, Pen. Come on, Pen. See how easy this is, guys? <laughs> Brooklyn's got her, here she comes. We got Penny in. Oh, there we go. Hook the fence around her. All right, you might need a little feed for Kevin. Kevin looks like he's wandering up there to check out the other pigs. What I'm gonna do here, <laughs> see, today is just not going as planned, but hopefully, 
you figured out a few things that will help you with your fencing. But I'm gonna shut this up just so Penny and Millie don't come back out. And then I'll go help my little buddies up there. There we go, wrangle Kevin. So, all right, you girls look a lot better over here than on that mud. Let's run up here, see where Kevin's wandered off to and get him back in the pen. All right, Brooklyn's got the secret weapon. Kevin's wanting to roast marshmallows at the fire pit. And we are gonna head him back to his ladies. Come on, bud. Come on. All right. Kevin's back in. We'll take our net. What was he doing? He was trying to roast marshmallows. Yeah. All right, we've got our three pigs over now. <laughs> it almost seems like we've done this before, minus the pigs getting out, huh? But. He is the marshmallow, though. Yeah, Kevin is the marshmallow for the s'more, huh? Yep. All right. Well, that is how we get a move. That's how we, just those tips. I think the biggest thing I wanted to share with you there was pulling those posts to the opposite side to keep that fence tight at the top. It makes it work so much better. Um, the last thing I want to show you today is how we roll up these fences and rolling them up is probably harder than setting them out. So let's go over here and we'll pick up their old fence and, uh, Get, show you how we roll it up so you can store them nice without them getting all tangled okay guys picking up the fences we're going to start obviously on an end and i like to put all the posts in my left hand and my right hand is going to bring them to my left hand so we're going to pull out the post just put your hand here it gets to be a, a bit at the end a lot in one hand so when we're just going to start walking towards this next post and your fence is starting to fold over itself when I get to the next post, I like to always do it with the points away from me. It's just a little bit easier. Put that post in my left hand and the net folds up under itself again. And we'll grab another post, put it in our hand and keep on walking. The net keeps folding up under itself. Grab a post and you can see that net is gonna hang down here. Sometimes it will get tangled in your feet. So you wanna keep it away from your body a little bit. So. We'll keep doing this all the way till we get to the end of this 100 foot roll of fence. Okay, so I've got my whole fence now. I'm gonna sling out the bottom and let it lay as flat as I can, keeping my posts together. One thing I like to do is come down to the end of the fence now. Sometimes, come in. Sometimes you'll get the fence that hangs out on the bottom a little bit. So I'll grab each strand and just try to straighten it out just to make it as compact as possible for when you're storing it. I'll grab each one all the way down. Some of them are longer than others. It just depends on where that post was when you picked it up all the way to the last one. Okay, and now I'm gonna take it and start rolling up. Just roll it up on itself. You can pull it towards you if you want, or you just roll it down to the stakes. I'm just gonna keep pulling it towards me. It will never look like it did when they sent it to you in the box. So I just keep rolling all the way to my stakes, and I can grab that bottom, that far away post from me, roll it up on itself and now i've got a nice tight roll isaiah has taken and put out two strings for us when you're doing your hog fence you only need two strings chicken fence you need three i'll set it on top of those strings with the post down i like to stick my knee into it so it doesn't unroll 
and then we're just gonna tie it up. Just a regular knot like you're tying your shoe. That way it's easy to get undone when you are ready to use it. I think these strings are actually for the chicken fence. They are super long, but we just have a whole pile of them every time we set a fence out and we'll use them for whatever fence we have. So they're way longer than the biggest. Yeah. So it's a little far out on the top here, but it is okay. It will store perfect for the next time we need it and it's not all tangled. We'll just untie it and roll it back out and we'll be ready for our next move. Okay guys, I hope that answered some of the questions you guys had about how we set up and take down our fence efficiently. Obviously our pigs got out there, but it wasn't a big deal. But I hope, I hope some of those tips will help you if you guys choose to use this fencing. We think it's the best fencing for being able to move our animals quickly and efficiently. And we think it's keeping predators out and also it keeps our pigs in once we close the gap. But anyway, we appreciate you guys following along today. If you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe, check us out on Instagram and also Facebook. And don't forget to make the change. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video.